So you might be thinking to yourself, why should I be making chaffles? Well, they're the perfect size for things like hamburgers, sandwiches, a sloppy joe, and they're so versatile, you can really change up the ingredients. So let's get started with the equipment that you're gonna need to make a chaffle. So some people ask, um, what waffle maker do I need to buy? And I would totally recommend the Dash Mini Waffle Maker. It's the perfect size for those hamburger ones like I was just talking about. And I have actually tried to use a standard size waffle maker before and it was just really hard to get the consistency on the shape. So that's why I recommend buying this. This is like $10 on Amazon. You can get it at Target as well and they sell them for like sometimes a 25% discount. So why don't you just go pick one of these up to try it. If you feel like you want bigger chaffles or they're not making enough for you then you can always upgrade later and to speed up the process i would totally recommend buying two dash waffle makers why because it takes about four minutes to make one chaffle if you're going to be cooking up a bunch to make sandwiches and hamburgers you probably want to buy two so that it can go twice as fast so now that we got the equipment out of the way let's talk about the basic recipe to make your chaffle let me get the ingredients out so I really feel that the ingredients that go into the chaffle are very important and they're going to decide the consistency that your chaffle turns out to be, like if it's gonna be crispy or soggy. So personally, I enjoy using this low moisture part skim mozzarella cheese. I got this uh, from Whole Foods. This is their like their brand 365, I think. And um, I always buy like this in multiple bags. Some people use cheddar cheese. Um, I usually use this as a base, and then if I wanted like a cheddar feeling to it, I would add cheddar. Um, I really think that it is important that it is low moisture because this is going to help your chaffle become really crispy. So this is my recipe for the perfect chaffle. This is going to make around six chaffles that are dash sized. Two cups of the low moisture mozzarella cheese. I mean, you can really eyeball it, you know. One, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect um, with the cheese. I mean, it's okay if it's a little over. That looks like two. So the next ingredient are two large eggs. So the chapel maker does take a while to heat up, so we're gonna start preheating our chapel maker. So I am going to be putting the waffle maker onto a pan because there will be some drippings from grease coming off and we wanna catch those so they don't go everywhere. So we're gonna let that preheat. So let's go back to making our chaffle batter. So next we're gonna be adding in a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. We think this adds a little bit of a fluff to the, to the batter. And we're going to be adding in four tablespoons of almond flour. Um, we like to use a super fine blanched almond flour. Um, you can probably find this anywhere nowadays. They sell it in store. One, two, three, four. From here, you can either add garlic powder if you wanted to make it more of a savory chaffle, or you could add something sweet to make it sweet. I'm just gonna keep it as a basic chaffle for now, and you can always improvise and add whatever you want later. This is just our standard chaffle recipe. Um, I like to use this little measuring spoon. It's a 1 8 cup. Um, it just helps to give you some consistency when you're putting the batter into the waffle maker. All right, there's nothing to it, really. I take a heaping amount, put it in the middle, I flatten it down a touch, and close it. So after the chaffle has done um, cooking, this should light up again, actually, and you'll hear it turn off. It's like a it, click. It clicks. So it clicked on just now. Um, get a view. The light is back on. So when this light turns off, it's going to be ready. There's going to be a lot of steam coming out of it. Um, and that's a good sign. That's that moisture that's evaporating. So when the dash maker turns off, the light turns off, you're gonna take the chaffle and put it on this cooling rack to dry. Um, it's kind of like, you know how when you melt cheese, uh, when you're cooking a recipe, the same thing happens. When, it, when the cheese cools, it tends to harden up and that's what's gonna give you that, you know, really crispy chaffle. 
So we'll check back in about three minutes. Oh, and don't open it because if you open it, it's going to look like a mess in there and you need all of those plates to be on the cheese in order to crisp it up. So I know there's some people that open it and close it. You want to keep it closed. Just trust the process. Kind of like keto. Turned off. Awesome. I'm trying to get that action shot. I missed it. It's all right. <laughs> um. Okay, so now it's time for the unveiling of the chaffle. We'll see. Play some cinematic music. Ah. So there you have a chaffle. So we're going to let this cool on the rack while we make our other ones. You can customize your chaffle in so many different ways. I mean, I'm just going to open up my cabinet and see what comes to me. You could add some garlic powder if you're making like a savory, like a hamburger, that would be great. Just add a little bit of that in the batter. You could add sweetener and vanilla and make a sweet chaffle. I've seen people do that. You could add chocolate chips and then top it with some maple syrup to give it like an actual like chocolate chip waffle feel. You could add some Old Bay and cheddar to make like a cheddar biscuit. Mmm, that would be good. Say that you're, you have turkey breast left over from Thanksgiving. Throw some rosemary, some sage in there. You have the perfect chaffle for Thanksgiving Day leftovers. Possibilities are endless and I think that's why so many people love chaffles. Any minute now. Oh, you missed it again. <laughs> Emily missed it. Um, it just turned off. Take a sip of my coffee. So we're going to open it up. Mmm. Hear that crisp? The beautiful thing about chaffles is that they store for a pretty long time. You can keep them in the fridge for a couple days. Um, the best way to do that is by buying one of these containers. You can get this on Amazon. We'll link this in the description below. And um, we're going to be putting these in here. We're going to be separating each chaffle with these parchment rounds that I also got on Amazon. Emily is laughing at me making my job very difficult. So because I had a little bit of batter left, I used all of it in the chaffle. This is what happens when you use too much batter. I mean, not like it really matters, but... Do you hear that crunch? <laughs> You're really close to me right now. How many do you could fit in there? Um, probably 12, 12 chaffles. So I'm gonna unplug my chaffle maker. I think another big question that people have is how do I clean my chaffle maker? So I'm gonna go over that now. Unplug my chaffle maker and I'm gonna wet this paper towel and we're gonna put it in there because this is gonna help catch and get that initial grease off. You don't want it too wet. Just a damp paper towel. Some people actually do this before they start making their chaffles just to get any initial uh, grease that was left behind. This is very hot, so be careful. So we're just gonna let that sit in there. Um, it's gonna steam up and um, we'll come back in a little bit when it cools down and I'll show you this final step to clean it. It's going to be very hot at this stage, so you might wanna wait until later to clean it, but um, just for the sake of the video. So do you see all that gunk that it got off initially? You can see like the ring of grease. So after the dash has time to cool, like completely cool down, um, you could use a toothbrush, preferably a new one. You want to use something with soft bristles because you this is like a Teflon coating, I think, and you just don't want anything to scrape that um, that coating. You do not. I should note that you don't want to use like oil 
when making these truffles. This has a non-stick surface. You do not need to add anything to make it not stick even more. It will do that naturally. Um, so yeah, you could just go around scrubbing with um, a soft, um, non-abrasive type of dishwashing detergent just to get that initial gunk out. And then if you wanted to at the end, you could clean it with um, just a paper towel. So this is actually our second video in our chaffle series. If you wanna see a chicken Florentine chaffle, click here. You are not going to be disappointed in this sandwich. We'll see you over there. I'm Sarah from the Keto Twins, signing out. <laughs> I don't think I wanna like that angle. <laughs> <laughs> is it good? Mm -hmm. Crunchy? Mm -hmm.